host, Paul Blair. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us, and welcome to the Bob Simmons Show. Well, the Cowboys improved their record to 3-0 for the first time since 1988 with a dominating performance over the Fresno State Bulldogs. 35-zip was the final. With me to talk about the game, the head coach of Cowboy football, Bob Simmons. And, Coach, you had to be pleased. A complete performance offensively, defensively, and in the special teams. Paul, I was. It was good to be home. Uh, special weekend, orange peel, a lot of things going on. Uh, but it was good to come home and play in front of our fans. Uh, I think our team was excited. Uh, we really wanted to play sharp, uh, both on both sides of the ball, and, and our kids came out and played well. And play sharp they did. Well, let's get right to the first half highlights. As Coach said, Orange Peel went on Friday night for the, the second annual major pep rally that we had. Jeff Foxworthy, uh, a national television star and comedian, was in town. Of course, Coach Halligan with his cowboy hat. Riding on a horse. Bryant so. Reeves. Yeah. Did he ride in on a horse? Yeah, he did. Oh, I'd have paid to see that. <laughs> that would have been worth the admission price right there. For the third game in a row, we win the toss and defer and let the defense set the tempo. Well, you know, that, that defense is playing well, and, and uh, we want to take the win and put the defense on the field so we can get the great field position. And you can see the first play they come out and try to run it. Our defense really stuffs them. Then this, this is a great break. Our secondary is really playing well, breaking on the ball, breaking on the ball, Paul. And, and here's a third down situation where they come up short. Uh, we, we force a kick here. We get pretty good field position. It's a low kick. RW does a great job of uh, filling the punch and it gets back up field. And we actually start our first offensive drive at the 50 yard line. Well, great field position after the 22-yard return. Tony Lindsay starts the game at QB and finds his big tight end on the first play of the game. Well, that's something we've talked about uh, in our game plan, really coming out and trying to, to, to open it up a little bit. And uh, we really want to try to throw, throw deep to throw deep to Alonzo and or RW. It happens to be uh, Alonzo caught the ball. But you, we see here we, we have great field position. We're running the inside play. This is Nathan. Uh, he's back this ball game running up the middle, and then we come back with uh, just a, uh, a mouse or a screen play, as we call it. Jamal Fox does a nice job of catching and running through the end zone. Now, Jamal had a great game as a flanker, I guess. You lined up at wide receiver and flanker. Is that a new wrinkle in the offense? Well, you know, it's something we, we've been doing uh, all of the last few weeks, but here's a young man that's got great athleticism. He's got good hands and uh, probably does a good job of catching the ball. We get back on defense, and really we start with him in the hole, and uh, Jamal Williams is a guy that uh, – uh, I think people are going to have to contend with the whole season. He's a very dominant inside nose tackle. It makes a lot of plays. Now, that dancing, he can't do right there. <laughs> <laughs> At least need to work with him a little bit on it. That's right. <laughs> Second down, a roll out there. Volek throws incomplete, bringing up third and 15 from the shadow of their own goalpost. Yeah, and, and, and the one thing that uh, we've been doing this whole ball game is really going three and out, but that's RW. It's good to see him come up with his first interception. But he's been playing good these last couple of weeks. Great field position again, Paul, and then we get the ball back at the 50. Uh, an outside play by Nathan, and then this is a, this is a play fake from Chris to one of our tight ends uh, for a first down. Good decision. He probably could have ran it, but that's not a bad decision. Throwing it to our tight end needs to turn up a little bit more and get more yardage, but uh, we'll accept that. That's the first down. And then we come back with a uh, counter play with, to Jamal Fobbs. He makes a nice run and takes it down to about the 10 or 15-yard line. Our offensive line still is doing a pretty good job of blocking. That's Josh Henson and Menifee uh, cutting down people. Menifee looks like he's lost a bit of weight, a little more agile than he was last year. Well, you know, uh, Calvin is, is a pretty good athlete. Now, as far as him losing weight, I don't think he's, he's lost. <laughs> That's not going to happen. <laughs> uh, but uh, our offensive line, this is a great cut by Fobbs inside and get, getting what he can. Then uh, a little bit of a trickery pass play where we go inside to Alonzo Mays and he makes an uh, excellent catch. And we saw two receivers there in that zone running an identical pattern. Is that designed? Or? Well, uh, it was designed uh, on that particular play, but the one guy was not supposed to be in there. Okay. <laughs> Six play, 52-yard scoring drive, and the Cowboys go up 14-0 with a Seth Conley kick. And now the defense will be back on the field, and we see uh, Michael Pittman, a guy that ran for 204 yards last week, nowhere to run this week. Well, uh, and that was a challenge for our defense. We knew that coming in that he was a pretty good football player, and you see – uh, guy, I think that's Table LeBlanc mm -hmm. stepping up and uh, our defense really wanted to challenge him and swarm and put a lot of pressure on the, uh, the quarterback to make him show, throw quick throws and for the most part all night we had the quarterback hurrying and throwing quick outs. This is a ball that I really thought that uh, Kevin Williams got excited about and almost came up with and then we forced him to come up with a quick kick. Uh, but again, uh, there were several situations where our defense went three and out and three and out. We really gave our offense a chance to get back on the field. 
you know, uh, their defense, to give them a lot of credit, really ran, ran east and west well. And, and uh, our passing game uh, to Alonzo Mays is really what they gave to us. And Chris, you see Chris, so look here, is doing a nice job of reading coverages, uh, giving the ball back to Nathan on an outside play. He picks up about 15 yards running hard. And then our offense is picking up now a lot of confidence. We go back to the passing game. It's, it's Tip Fobbs was in the right place most of the night, you know, you can say that. <laughs> Because he, here again, this is, this is a screen back to him, a third and long yardage. He makes the best of it. Nice cut, good quickness. Gives us a first down here. Uh, and you see, we, we'll, we'll, we'll throw this play. We'll let their offensive linemen come up the field and our offensive linemen go down the field, do a nice job of screening for them. But now, you know, he takes it on his own and get as much as he can. I think he takes it down to about the 15 yard line. I think we see the touchdown play here. Now, this was drawn up exactly like this on the chalkboard, Absolutely. I know, in pregame. We, we drew it up through the man's hand, over the clock, <laughs> into uh, <laughs> in the fob's hands. But that was a very fortunate pass that, that we got away with. And, and uh, going into halftime, 21 to nothing, feel pretty good about uh, our efforts and, and our chance to win this ball game. Well, Fobbs had seven receptions on the night, so not just an a outstanding tailback, but getting him out in the flanker in the wide out position was very effective as well. You had to feel pretty good going in halftime up 21 nothing. Well, we did. Uh, our, our defense felt good about uh, probably trying to get a shutout. Our offense felt good about moving the ball, and uh, we just had to go in and, and make some sound adjustments and, and, and come back out on the second half and play the same way we played the first half. Well, we'll be back to take a look at the second half after this timeout. Welcome back to the Bob Simmons Show. Well, Coach, last week you were on the road, had a great first half, and, and perhaps didn't play as well in the fourth quarter as you'd hoped. Did you uh, concentrate more on finishing the game uh, at this particular ball game? Absolutely. We talked about that at half, and uh, the one thing we talked about was uh, playing all four quarters and, and really being sharp. And, and so I challenged the team at halftime. I said, listen, you got a 21 nothing lead. Uh, you got to play like it's nothing, nothing. But most of all, you got to go out and finish this game. Uh, and uh, I, I thought that we came back out in the second half and really played with a lot of spirit and did finish the game. Well, let's get to the second half highlights, and that's right, Coach. All four quarters were very uh, a dominating performance in every phase of the game. It seemed like the team never let up, and uh, let's see, we took the ball to open the possession, didn't get anywhere, and now we'll see Fresno State on their first possession of the well, second half. Well, and they, they come out on the second half, and, and they get pretty good field position. I think they got a penalty, but our defense, Again, feels pretty good about uh, shutting them down. There's a lot of pressure there. Uh, even when he throws the ball, there's about two and three defensive backs uh, around their receiver. This is one of the plays that they had success with in the first half. They came back to it. We stopped him here. Uh, Jamal Williams does a nice job of coming up the middle and blocking the ball. Naturally, we can try to pick it up and score. Uh, but that's complete domination. He does a nice job of splitting the seams here. Uh, excellent play on his part. Uh, and then we can. This is, I think that's Kenyatta Wright trying to field it and pick it up and try to score with it. What, are you, what is Jamal's strength? Uh, what, what separates him from other defensive players? Well, I, I think that uh, naturally he, he's got his, his physical prowess. He, you know, he, he's uh, probably a 400-pound bencher, but he's so exceptionally quick and fast and doesn't stay blocked. And I think that's the difference in his defensive play. Here, on, uh, we, we really start the second half with Tony Lindsay comes out. Tony makes a good decision. Uh, he's got an open receiver, but he sees that he can run the ball for about 15 to 20 yards. He does that, comes back and gives the ball back to Jamal Fives and what we call one of our outside plays. And uh, now he's going back inside. Tried to make a, uh, an excellent throw to Alonzo, a little bit behind him. We try a 49-yard field goal, and that's something that we really want to try to improve uh, our stature. We haven't been very good in that area, and that's something we really got to improve. And we go back on defense. And uh, right now, they're trying to do anything to get uh, Michael Pittman moving. And this is a reverse play. And all night, our defense was in pretty good football position and making plays. That's, that's Terrell knows does a good job. And they try a short three-step drop on the defensive back. Really do a good job of breaking up. And then what they're really trying to do is set up uh, really pump and go. But you can see Kevin Williams is not going for it either. He, he did a nice job there. Forcing the kick. Our special teams, we also talked about really improving in that area, and, and, and uh, this is RW does a nice job of, of uh, catching ball. He averaged about 10.6 mm -hmm. on the return all night, Paul. But the offense gets the ball, comes back out, and that's Tony Lindsay. We decide to go up top quick to RW, makes a nice throw, a nice catch, touchdown. 
Well, was that a, was there a, some deception over there? Was that just a streak pattern where RW just ran past the secondary? Well, it, we kept it simple. Just run, son. <laughs> <laughs> when you've got that kind of speed, I guess That's you right. can do that. A beautiful pass, 58-yard touchdown pass from Tony Lindsay to R.W. McCorders, and that puts the Pokes up 28-0 at this point in the game, and now the defense will come back out on the field and pick up right where they left off, and here we'll see Trent Alexander, and Trent really had a great game. Well, I tell you, he, he did a nice job of, of uh, being physical and being in the right place. That's a good third down stop, man. We talked about tackling, and that, now that's a good, solid tackle. Almost cut him in half. He just put the man right down. Uh, and, and uh, you know, last week we had 18 missed tackles. This week we only had four, so that's a big improvement for that defense. And they're really taking pride on really stopping opponents and making sure that uh, that we get negative yardage. Here's a this is a great stop. I think that's Terrell. Uh, that's it's uh, not Terrell, but that's Andre Waddle. Waddle. Mm -hmm. uh, and then there's Jamal Pops right on the pile. But that's the kind of pressure that, that, that we were getting to him all night. We forced him to with several punts. I think they had about eight or nine punts. And again, this is this is RW. This is not a good decision late in the ball game. Uh, he's got to be willing to fair catch some of those balls. <laughs> I, you know, he didn't know how to raise his hand. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, he doesn't. You know, we talked about that coming off, but and then we go back inside and get the ball to a big fullback. I think that's Brian Aiken. He's been blocking all night, and we come back to him twice. Uh, this is a pass play to him. Uh, he did a good job on that. Got to throw him a bone every now and then. He's at <laughs> button heads with the linebackers. Let him carry the ball. And Nathan, now, come on. We heard all week long how Nathan was banged up. He certainly didn't look like it Saturday. Well, that was a good run. He's still playing on a bum ankle, but uh, that's a good decision by Chris. You don't, you don't usually like your quarterback throwing across their bodies because it can lead to an interception. Uh, but here he did a pretty good job. And this is Jamal Fobbs running through a huge hole uh, by our offensive line and you're getting his shoulders upfield and getting positive yardage. Well, he did have a good night, as we said, running the ball and uh, catching the ball. And now here we see a uh, quick rollout, and Steggs with the reception. He's our third tight end, a young man from Nebraska, yeah. and he played fairly well. Well, Steggs doing a good job. This is a nice play because we've been running the inside fullback play for the last three ball games, and then we put in the quarterback play off that, and we did a good job. And uh, now we try to go back inside to, to Jamal, but that didn't work. Then we come with a tight end uh, with a pass to Alonzo, I think he had the two touchdown catches. This is a good decision by Chris. He puts it up high where only Alonzo can really make a super catch. He does a good job of throwing a jump ball type pass. 11 play, 74 yard uh, touchdown drive to put the Cowboys up 35 nothing here with a Seth Conley kick. And now we're later on in the fourth quarter and uh, we were getting a chance to play some of the reserves and, and still dominating on the defensive front. Well, absolutely right. When you put in your reserve, they got to play with that same intensity. And you see Billy Stone come in the ball game for Kenyatta Wright and he's doing a good job. And, and this is, uh, again, Alexander uh, on an option play, which they try to run against the defensive plays, man. He does a good job of, of reading it, the inside people, and he's in the right place making tackles. So, and see, Pippa had a long night. He didn't, he didn't. I think he ran for a minus. Uh, minus 22 yards. We force a punt here. Uh, we've been having success on returns. We really, really want to try to break this one. And RW brings us up the left side to our bench side and makes a nice cut. And I think he might have been about one block away from taking this thing the distance. 31 yard punt return yeah. there by RW, setting up the offense in good field position. And here we see Dante Hill going to work. Yeah, we, you know, we only have right now two fullbacks. We're really trying to get Dante ready to play. And, and so this game afforded us to get him some snaps at the tailback position. Really thought he did a good job. He ran hard inside, and, and uh, you know, we finally come out yeah, with that win, 35 to nothing. Who's a run-oriented quarterback and also can throw the ball. Then you come in with Chris uh, Chris Luca, who's a passing quarterback. I mean, you kind of put defense on. You put the defense in a pressure situation because they really don't know what to expect and they're off balance. And with both of them doing their jobs consistently, this team ought to be able to move them down the field always. Kenyatta right in the middle of a lot of the action, and you took the run away. You forced them to make a living through the air, and they couldn't get it done. Yeah, Coach Ron talked all week. They had two real good running backs. We've seen them on film. They was running over everybody. And we knew that we had to come in and stop the run from the start and just keep them off balance and make them adjust to us instead of us adjusting to them. Coach, I know you expected to have success offensively and to have success defensively, but did you really 
think going into the game that your defense would be able to shut them down so completely? Well, uh, Paul, I thought that we were capable of doing that. I think in the, in the first two ball games we had success uh, playing against the run, uh, this best pass ball game against USL, we slacked up. But when, you, when our defense plays with a lot of intensity and plays sound, uh, they're capable of doing anything. When you got Jamal Williams inside, he makes those people better. I think our, our secondary was playing good, and, 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 our, and our kids uh, played with a lot more intensity and really wanted to uh, shut out, and that's what they got. Well, a great performance for all four quarters. We'll be back for, with more after this timeout. TD's two-minute drill sponsored by Farm Credit. For ag, for life. Welcome back to the Bob Simmons Show. Each week, Tom Dorado takes us behind the scenes to meet some of the Cowboy support personnel and players. This week, we get a chance to meet a redshirt freshman running back who's had an outstanding first three games of the season, Jamal Fobbs. <laughs> Jamal, it had to be a thrill for you to perform so well when you came home in front of family and friends at USL. It was quite a thrill. I mean, you know, it was really exciting, you know, to have my family there supporting me. You know, it felt real good inside, you know, knowing that my family was there, you know, and I was able to play well in front of my family. I could tell seeing you at the hotel prior to the game that you were ready to go out and play. Even though people were talking to you and wishing you all the best of luck, you were ready to get it done. Yeah, I was ready to get it done. I mean, you know, we were practicing hard all week, and Coach laid into us that we can't lay down for this team. They're going to come out and play hard. We know they play well at home, so we just had to go out and play our football and do the things that we do. You seem to be a very confident young man on and off the field. Well, confidence is something, you know, that, that you have to have to be successful. If you're not confident, I mean, you probably won't think that you were able to do some things. You have to have some confidence. You don't want to be too confident. <laughs> you want to have things, you know, to think positive in your mind, you know, to say, you know, I can get that done. And you really have some incentive, you know, to get that done. You probably needed some of that confidence last year, red shirt year, that's tough on everybody. You want to play, but you know you're not. Mm -hmm. But it was good for you, was it not? It was great for me. I mean, you know, I came in last year as a freshman just wanting to play, but I realized, you know, they had David and Andre here, and I. And I had to re-humble myself. I was like, man, you know, those guys are great. So I'm just going to have to pay my dues on the practice field, do the things that I have to do to get on the field. Unfortunately enough, this year, you know, it worked out for me. College football, football in general, has been a big part of your family. My father is, has been coaching for quite a number of years, and I've always been hanging around him, his teams, with his guys and all that. So and my brother's been playing, you know, at Graham, and so I've been around football basically my entire life. Always have an opportunity to get some extra tips when you go home, right? Bit, you know, like when he's at practice, I'm just out there playing around, you know, and I'll just stand there and listen to what he's saying. And I'm like, you know, that makes some kind of sense. You know, maybe I'll use that when I'm playing, so I guess it helped me out. You had a chance to go to places like Texas, Notre Dame, LSU. What brought you to Oklahoma State? Well, when I came to Oklahoma State on my visit, I mean, I was really comfortable. It felt like I was at home, you know, the coaching staff, Coach Simmons, you know, just the whole, whole surrounding. I, mean, I was real relaxed, you know, around the surrounding. I wasn't really uptight, you know, worried about doing this, doing this thing or doing that thing. I, I was just really relaxed, you know, when I came on my visit, and I really enjoyed it. I sense a tremendous confidence beginning to grow now on this football team. Am I right? You, you're exactly right. I mean, you know, th these guys, you know, we're working hard at practice, and we have confidence at practice that we can win football games. And we're going to prove you know, to a lot of people that, that we can go out and win some football games because we're really working hard in the weight room, in the, in, on the practice field, in the meetings. You know, we're getting things together. You know, and these guys really have a different attitude from last year. I tell you, uh, he's got a different attitude. Jamal Fobbs has been exceptional for us this year. Uh, young guy, red shirt freshman, uh, to have an opportunity to run for, you don't run for over 200 yards without any talent. Although the offensive line did a good job, he did an exceptional job. And uh, last week to play the way he did with seven catches, and uh, he's going to have a great career here, Paul. Well, the tradition continues, Coach. Tailback U just rolls on and on. Right. We'll be back to take a look at the Northeast Louisiana Indians after this. 
Welcome back to the Bob Simmons Show. Coach, last Tuesday, the citizens of the city of Stillwater voted on a referendum concerning the new Oklahoma State University Sports Complex. Can you fill us in on the details? Yeah, one of the things we want to do here at Oklahoma State, Paul, is really improve our facilities uh, and compete in the Big 12. And, and to do that, uh, we really had to go out and raise $45 million, and, and, and the city of Stillwater was, was a part of that project. They came out uh, and helped us with their referendum vote. It really started with the students who also uh, agreed to a fee hike. And we're very pleased that the students here in Stillwater and the community of Stillwater is a part of this project. Well, over two-thirds of the way on the way to $45 million, so the end is within sight. We've got an open date next week. Coach, in two weeks, back home again, the Northeast Louisiana Indians, 6 o'clock, September 27th, uh, here right here at Lewis Field. I know you'll be excited about that one. Folks, we'll be off next week because of the open date, so we'll see you again in two weeks right here on the next Bob Simmons Show. Good night, everyone.